friends let us stand together as we begin our first communion mass as we are called to god's altar for the very first time In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Amen. Dear friends here gathered in the church and those who join us digitally, we gather and enter the journey of faith as the family of God. It is Jesus who calls us around his Eucharistic table. He first called the 12, now he calls you 19 to receive him in Holy Communion for the very first time. And so the smile on our Lord's face is quite large because he calls each of you by name and he loves you so very much. And so as we begin this Mass, we remember all those who have passed away as we celebrate the communion of saints, trusting that they are in the presence of God. And so let us first begin our Mass by bowing our heads and praying for God's mercy, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are happy to die on the cross to free us from our sin. 
Christ, have mercy. Now risen from the dead, you lead us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. I now invite Jonah to come forward and lead us in our welcome. Long, long ago, in a far and distant place, God filled, God planted a garden. It was a beautiful garden filled with every kind of fruit and flowers. In the cool of the evening, God would walk in the garden. But it was lonely garden, so God lay down beside a quiet stream. He dreamed, and the dream came true. He dreamed of us, his children, the most beautiful creation in his garden. Sometimes, though, his children lost their ways in his garden, so he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to look after them. We are his children, and Jesus is our shepherd. On the night of the Last Supper, Jesus gave his body and blood to the apostles. Today, Jesus invites us to a wonderful banquet at his table. This day is special. It is our very first Holy Communion. Thank you, Jonah. We now praise our God as we sing our Gloria. Let us pray, O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light. Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us be seated, and I invite Jonah forward for our first reading. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not create death, and he is sad whenever a living creature dies. God made everything, and there is a reason for every living creature. No deadly poison in them, and the kingdom of death doesn't rule earth. Goodness will never die. God created us to live forever, just as he does. But the devil was jealous and brought death into the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'll invite Luca forward for our second reading. A 
A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, you do everything better than anyone else. You have stronger faith. You speak better and know more. You are eager to give, and you love us better. Now you must give more generously than anyone else. You know that our Lord Jesus Christ was kind enough to give up all his riches to become poor so that you could become rich. I am not trying to make life easier for others by making life harder for you, but it is only fair for you to share with them when you have so much and they have so little. Later, when they have more than enough, you enough and you are in need, they can share with you. Then everyone will have a fair share, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the gospel. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus got into the boat and crossed Lake Galilee. Then he stood on the shore, and a large crowd gathered around him. The person in charge of the Jewish meeting place was also there. His name was Jairus, and when he saw Jesus, he went over to him. He kneeled at Jesus' feet and started begging him for help. He said, My daughter is about to die. Please come and touch her so that she will get well and live. Jesus went with Jairus, and many people followed along and kept crowding around. A little while later, some men came from Jairus' home and said, your daughter has died. Why bother the teacher anymore? Jesus heard what they said, and he said to Jairus, Don't worry, just have faith. Jesus did not let anyone go with him except Peter and the two brothers, James and John. They went home with Jairus and saw the people crying and making a lot of noise. Then Jesus went inside and said to them, why are you crying and carrying on like this? The child is not dead. She is just asleep. But the people laughed at Jesus. After Jesus had sent them all out of the house, he took the girl's father and mother and his three disciples and went to where she was. He took the 12-year-old girl by the hand and said, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. The girl got right up and started walking around. Everyone was greatly surprised, but Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. Then he said, give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
Let us be seated. Special friends of Jesus and family and friends here physically and digitally, the church has given us some awesome readings to reflect upon today. They have something to do with one of my favorite things to do, eating. <laughs> Raise your hand if you like eating too. Some of our families don't? Okay, I'll make sure, you know. Yeah, we all like to eat, right? Eating is important. And then it also talks about living forever. So eating and living together, and forever, sorry, is something that is closely connected. It feels like yesterday, right parents, that you brought your daughters and sons to this sacred altar, or one similar, to have them baptized. The first sacrament that we received when we wore white for the very first time. As Jesus touched our heart, as he freed us from original sin. Like our stained glass windows remind us, that tree when Adam and Eve we're told by God, you can do whatever you want, just don't eat from that tree. And the devil says, ah, don't listen to God. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Do whatever you want, right? Because he tries to trick us, like the second reading told us. But the devil is not our friend. Jesus is our friend. We always have to listen to what Jesus says, right? And so through baptism, that sin is washed away, and we are forgiven. Then, friends, sacrament number two that you received this year, remember? was when you came forward and asked Jesus to forgive your sins, right? The times when you and I break his commandments. And Jesus says, I love you and I forgive you. That brings us to sacrament numero three, right? That's today, the day you've been waiting your whole life for, right? You friends keep coming up like this and you kind of give me the look, you know? I don't want a blessing. I want Jesus in my heart, Father Rico, right? And today is the day, today is the day in which Jesus will come in your heart and touch you so beautifully with his grace. Now, we have to think of that first meal, which we call the last what? Who can tell me? Jesus is, yeah, you were first, sweetheart. Tell me, nice and loud. The last supper, that's right, where Jesus called his 12 BFFs. Do you know what the group of his 12 friends are called? 12 the disciples yeah and they have another name that starts with an a the 12 apostles that's right and so he calls the 12 disciples who we call the apostles around his altar for the first time now who can tell me the name of one of the 12 apostles before you tell me I want us to think not all of the apostles wrote the Gospels. Those were special friends of Jesus. Two of them were apostles, two were not. So I want to think of, tell me one of the 12 apostles, the first friends of Jesus, who got called to his altar. Tell me one. Tell me one. Yes. Judas. Yeah, he's the bad guy. We often start with Judas, huh? <laughs> yeah, Judas didn't really listen to Jesus. He heard him, but he didn't listen. Okay, Judas, we've got number one. Tell me another apostle. Yes. Paul. Paul is a very good friend of Jesus, but Paul was not an apostle till later on. He called himself an apostle, but he wasn't at the Last Supper. He's one of those friends that I said we're going to talk about in a little bit. Tell me another apostle. I heard a shout there. Peter, that's right. He often was outspoken, so how fitting that we shouted it out. That's so perfect. Sweetheart, what were you going to say? What a great answer. Peter and stereo. Very good. So we have Peter, the leader of the apostles. Jesus is really good friend. And then we have Judas, who wasn't so much. Can you think of another one? Do you remember what Peter's brother's name was? It starts with an A. Rhymes with Randrew? Yeah, that's the one, Andrew, very good. That's Andrew's name. See, he's named after the apostle, our youth minister, who's totally awesome. All right, then there's one with a really long name. 
we shorten it and call him Bart. Do you know what the rest of his name is? It's kind of hard to say. Yes. Just a little bit louder. The masks hide your voice. What does she say? Bartholomew, yeah, it just kind of rolls off your tongue. Not so much, right? He's the hardest one to say. All right. Then we had some brothers. I talked about them in the gospel. Both of their names start with J. Don't say Jesus. His name starts with J too. Yes. John and his brother, you're right. Same letter. I didn't hear you, sweetheart. Luke, he's a friend of Jesus, too. He wrote one of the Gospels, but he wasn't at the Last Supper. He's the one with Mark. Those two, everyone thinks, are apostles. But they weren't there. They were not there. One more time. James, that's right. There's two James. There's James the Lesser and James the Greater. So we're up to five, as far as I'm concerned, right? Then we have a few more. We have St. Philip. We have St. Jude, who's kind of like Judas, but they're different people. We have St. Simon. And we have St. John, which you've already said, was, which was at the cross. And so these were all gathered around Jesus to receive him in communion for the first time. Now, when Jesus had the Last Supper, what food did Jesus prepare? Pizza and Pepsi? No. What did Jesus have? Uh huh. He had fish. You're right. They had that earlier in the dinner. You're right. He had fish, just like in our stained glass here. Jesus loved to give fish to the people because they live near water, like Lake Galilee, like I said in the gospel today. If you've ever been to Israel, like Father Rico has, there's a lot of water, little lakes around. But at the Last Supper, he gave them what? Yes. Bread and wine, that's right. And so that's why at every Mass, we do the same thing. Doesn't look like a loaf of bread, but those little hosts are made by some holy nuns who live just not far from us in Hamilton. That's their job, to help churches to make hosts. Okay? And so that's bread. And you're about to receive Jesus. Looks like bread, smells like bread, tastes like bread, not bread. The bread was changed into Jesus's what? Very, very, very important. Yes. Um, that's the wine. That's right. The wine was changed into his blood. But what was the bread changed to? Okay, good. You were going to say the same answer. Yeah, it's hard to see where Father Rico's eyes. Usually I get closer to you, but I'm not allowed, as you know. Right? Yeah. So the bread becomes Jesus's body and the wine becomes Jesus' blood. And he says, do this to remember me. And so this is why we do it. For thousands of years, the church has done this. And that's why we are here today, to gather around Jesus' altar, where he is going to in a few moments. You're going to hear your name called, but it is Jesus who is calling you to his altar for the very first time. So we talked about eating and eternal life. Jesus says, in St. John's Gospel, in chapter 6, he says, When you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will live forever. So when we eat this sacred meal, we connect ourselves with the kingdom of God in heaven. Until that day, hopefully in a very long time for all of us, when Jesus will call us to be with him forever. So this holy meal connects us with life that never ends. We heard the passion of Luca and Jonah proclaiming God's word. That's how excited we should always be when we read the Bible. Great job, boys. Very proud of you. Very proud. Right where St. Paul says, it is important that we not only eat this meal, but that we share with one another so that everyone has enough. And that's what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Once we receive him in Holy Communion, we are called to love like Jesus does. So just like in the gospel, we heard of that young girl, just a little bit older than you, friends. She's only 12, that was really sick. And they thought that she was going to die. Jesus says, no, 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 no. I'm God. I can do anything. I want to heal her, right? And he did heal her. 
because Jesus always shows his love to us. So, as we prepare our hearts, dear friends, dear parents, dear family and friends, it is so important that we not only celebrate today receiving Jesus for the very first time, but every Sunday we come to this altar and we receive Jesus in our hearts so that fed by his body and blood, we may be strengthened by God and that one day we will live with him forever. And so let us stand together now as we proudly proclaim our faith in the Lord Jesus. We do so by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I now invite Christopher forward to lead us in our prayer of the faithful. We know that we can always bring our needs to God, and so our response today will be, give us this day our daily bread. Together, give us this day our daily bread. For the Church, that the Eucharist may form all believers into a community of love, we pray to the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. For well-off countries, that they may share with the poor countries so that none of God's children will go hungry, we pray to the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. For all gathered here, that we eat Jesus' body and blood at God's altar and May we be filled with his love. We pray to the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. For the people who look after us and teach us, our mothers, fathers, priests, teachers, grandmothers, and grandfathers too, please bless them and once in a while let them see the world through children's eyes. We pray to the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. May our parents set aside each Sunday as your special day and bring us to church so that we may receive you often in holy communion. We pray to the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. We remember all of our family members and friends who have died to live with God in heaven, that they will sleep peacefully in God's hands. We pray to the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. And for all the prayers we say to God from the silence of our hearts. Lord our God, like the first apostles, you call us to your altar to receive your very flesh and blood. May this holy meal in which we experience your love and grace Help us to live lives that are pleasing to you. We ask these in all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be seated and join in our offertory hymn. And I invite our gift bearers, Valencia, Jonah, and Harper to the back to bring forward our gifts of bread and wine.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Friends, let us stand. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy. Let us kneel together. God, our Father, you are most holy, and we want to show you that we are grateful. We bring you bread and wine and ask that you send your Holy Spirit to make these gifts the body and blood of Jesus, your Son. Then we can offer to you what you have given to us. On the night before Jesus died, he was having supper with his apostles. He took bread from the table and gave you thanks and praise. Then he broke the bread, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. When supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice that was filled with wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus' mercy. The mystery of faith. Your 
We do now what Jesus told us to do. We remember his death and his resurrection. And we offer you, Father, the bread that gives us life and the chalice that saves us. Jesus brings us to you. Welcome us as you welcome him. Father, because you love us, you invite us to come to your table. Fill us with the joy of the Holy Spirit as we receive the body and blood of your Son. Lord, you never forget any of your children, and we ask you to take care of those we love and to pray for those who have died. Remember everyone who is suffering from pain or sorrow. Remember Christians everywhere and all other people in the world, too. We are filled with wonder and praise when we see what you do for us through Jesus, your Son, and so we give you praise. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us stand together and at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Let us kneel together. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood. From all our sins and from all that is evil, keep us faithful to your commandments, and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen.
For those at home who are receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Friends here in the church, we're going to first begin with you 19 who will receive Jesus in Holy Communion for the first time. As you hear your name called, come forward and stand on the circle just as I asked you. Then once our 19 friends will receive Jesus in Holy Communion, those who are Catholic and are in a state of grace, you may come forward as the ushers escort you forward to receive Jesus in Holy Communion. For those who are not Catholic and not in a state of grace, you com may come forward with your arms crossed like so to receive a blessing. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Jonah. <laughs> Jonah, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Christian. Christian, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Eva. Eva, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Michaela. Michaela, the body of Christ. <laughs> the Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Naomi. Naomi, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Valencia. Valencia, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Jax.
Jack's the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Sophie. Sophie, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Emerson. Emerson, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Harper. Parker, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Sophia. Sophia, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good girl. Good girl. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Lena. Lena, the body of Christ. Amen. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Sierra. Sierra, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Trey. Trey, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Dylan. Still in the body of Christ. Your mask. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Abigail. Abigail, the body of Christ. Your mask, your mask. The 
the Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Lucas. Lucas, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Noah. Noah, the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus calls to the altar for the first time, Celeste. Celeste, the body of Christ.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite Jonah forward for our thank yous. There have been lots of firsts in our lives. First two, first two wheeler, first day of school, but nothing can be more beautiful than our first Holy Communion. We would like to thank all the people who helped make this day a special memory. Father Rico, our teachers, and also our parents and families. Thank you, Jonah, for the thank yous. Friends, before the final blessing, on behalf of our entire parish, we have been praying for the 19 of you for a very, very, very long time for this day to come, and the Lord has blessed us with a glorious day. May the joy that you feel in your heart today be the same joy you feel every time you receive him in Holy Communion. Dear families at home, thank you for joining us. Of course, I love when this church is jam-packed with people. We received great news this week from our government that Effective Wednesday we can get back to 25%, which is great, eventually getting us back to the 100%. For those who have been vaccinated, this is the safest place on earth. Those who have not been vaccinated, this is the safest place on earth. At God's altar, nobody's in the hospital from coming to church. Make sure that you come to this sacred altar to be filled with God's body and blood. Thank you to our youth minister, Andrew, to our music ministry, and all of us who are gathered here, dear parents and siblings, as we give honor and praise to God for the gift of Jesus in the Eucharist. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ.